In this segment, we're going to go over setting up the handpiece, oiling the handpiece, and putting the comb and cutter on. First of all, I'm going to go and just go over the components of a handpiece so everyone knows what we're talking about. First of all, we've got the ferrule, and that's attached to the handpiece by a thread. Then we go to the back joint. This is what they call the back joint cover. We've got the back joint spring. You can see that metal spring in there. Then we go around, there's two cogs in there. We go down, <coughs> this is called the handle, that's the main part of the handpiece. Inside this hole here, we've got the ball and the ball race. We go up a little bit further. This is what, we've, what we call the tension nut. Inside the tension nut, we've got a safety clip or a spring, safety spring, and then we call that the sleeve. Inside that sleeve, we've got the giggle pin, which goes down to what we call a fork yoke, that main piece that sits inside of the handle. There's a, there's a spring in there holding that giggle pin in. <coughs> this side, we've got the post, and that sits inside a cup. <coughs> the cup sits inside what we call the yoke, and that's this main bit here without these attachments there. Up the front of that fork yoke, that fits inside that is a set of chicken feet. On the back of the chicken feet, we've got two sets of pins. You can see them on both sides there. That's just pins that fit into the front of the cutter, and these are your safety pins. The safety pins are there for obviously one reason. <coughs> if those top pins come out, they're there, so the, the bottom pins hold the cutter into the in, still on the, the comb without it having any um, it flying off. So <coughs> what we do now, the handpiece is ready to set up. We've, so we've finished last run. What we want to do is clean this comb bed off. The reason for that is, is if we end up with grease on that comb bed or a little bit of grit, when we go to put the comb on, it won't sit flush. So you've got a false bedding on that comb bed. So we've got a, a comb brush here. You'll see a lot of them have got this metal bit in there, and that's for when the grease gets a little bit hard on, on the yoke and around the chicken feet, you can scrape it off. But we just br brush that grease off. And then on the back here, we've just got to be a little bit careful here when we brush, because they will unscrew if we brush that side of it and screw up if we brush that side. So we, we want to try to screw up brush so the, the screws stay going up, otherwise if we brush the other way they'll end up rolling off down the board or down the grating. Clean all that off. Now, <coughs> next of all, what I like to do is to go and set the, <coughs> we'll put the comb on first before we put the cutter on. Now one of the main reasons why <coughs> we put the comb on first is because if we go to put the cutter on first and We've got a heap of tension on there. When we go to put the comb on, if we put the comb on second, I'll just tighten that up a little bit more, you'll see the combs going on at a different angle to the comb bed. So when we do it up, You'll think you'll have that tight, but when you start shearing in the tension, that comb will loosen off and it'll end up coming off on the board. What we do now is we back the tension off. We've got the cutter, remembering that we, we said there's two sets of holes, the top holes, the pin holes, and we've got to go into the pin holes on the chicken feet. We slide your cutter underneath the chicken feet you can see I, I try to pull them chicken feet up, so I'll have to back the tension off a little bit. Slide it underneath there. Put both those chicken feet pins in the cutter holes and hold it down with your thumb. If you don't hold it down with your thumb, 
sometimes they'll, that'll fall out like that and you'll do your, your tension up and you can see that pin is not in the hole. So we put it in the hole, tighten it up so it's finger tight. You don't have to over tighten it just for setting it up. Now, what we've got to do here now is to set our lead. And the lead, to set your lead, is what we call lead is, is the gap between your scallop, which is that scallop out bit there, and the tip of your cutter. And what we try to do as an average figure, we try to set it about a match thickness thick between the bottom of your scallop, scallop to the tip of the cutter. So you can see that one's hanging right over. So we've got to pull that comb out. So we turn it over. And we slide it up the comb bed. Finger tight again. And we adjust it to there. It could probably come out just a wee bit more. So we do it the same thing again. Now on a comb, most, most combs have got 13 teeth. So there'll be six this side and six that side of the middle tooth. And I usually go by the middle tooth when I set up the lead. So it's a, a matchstick thickness. It's a little bit uh, of an indication. Sometimes you might use a little bit more lead, sometimes you might use a little bit less. Say in good, good shear and long walled sheep, you'd, you'd Use a little bit more lead, and in tighter, smaller hoggedy sheep, lambs, you might use less lead. But it's one of them things that will, over your course of your shear and career, you'll try and, and you'll, you'll soon find out what suits best. The next we go to the throw, and what we call the throw is, is the cutter moving from that side, right over, to that side. Now, sometimes that ball will get stuck in the ball race, and so what we've got to do is just put our thumb on the cogs, like that, and just turn it like that. And we go from side to side. Now, I usually look at the centre tooth, and you can see how that centre tooth is just hanging over there. That cutter is hanging just over the centre tooth. If we go the other way, to the throw the other side, you can see how there's a fairly big gap in there. So what we want to do is to move the comb over that way, that centre tooth over that way. So the comb's got to be slid, slidden over on the bed that way. So we turn it back over. Slide her over, needs to be a little bit more. Just a tad more. And you can see that that cutter is even when I slide it across to that side. And that'll give you your throw. If, if that's not even, if I move it right across, to there, you'll see what happens here when I go to put your throw. That cutter is hardly touching that tooth up there. Compared to, it's hanging right over that tooth, nearly over here. <clears throat> that That's spot on. Now, it's, it's your time to do the comb screws up now. And you've just got to be a little bit wary to, of doing it on your leg. We like to put it on a hard surface because if that slips out of there, you'll go straight into your leg. We just tighten them up. Once we get to there, I just like to give them a little bit of a tweak. One little tweak. Now, 
We go to oiling the handpiece up. Now, first of all, if we put tension on here, if we go to put oil on these parts, the metal will be up against metal and you'll put oil on there and the oil won't go to where you want the oil to run. So we just leave the tension off to where we first had it to put the cutter on, so it's nice and easy. And grab an oil can. We put a little bit on that giggle pin and cup there. There's the, all the moving parts. Just a little bit there, a little bit there. Just run a little bit across your comb. Then we go to put some in on the ball race. You've got to be a little bit careful that you can see the ball race in there. It's at that angle. When the colour comb goes, the cutter goes over that side, it's at that angle. Now, if I went to put oil in there now, I'm right-handed, I go to put it in there, and you can see it'll clean miss where you really want it to go on that ball. So either you've got to look in there and put a little bit on, or have your cutter in the centre of the comb and you can see that ball is sitting in the centre of the ball race hole. So we put a little bit of oil on there, a little bit of oil on your cogs. There's moving parts there, so we put a little bit of oil there and just a drop down your ferrule. We don't want to over oil this too much because what happens, the oil will run out of here and come on the back of your flock or your handle and it'll end up getting right real slippery there. <clears throat> we try to oil these cogs every time we change a cutter or usually every half an hour. The same as that and in your ferrule, your ball race. Every time you change a cutter you re-oil everything. So now we go to set the tension. A good way of getting the right tension, if we put too much tension on the handpiece, what will happen, it will get hot, and it's like having a hair cut with hot clippers. You'll, you, it'll end up burning the sheep and you'll end up fighting the sheep. So what we do is a good idea is just to grab the tension nut, like that, make sure you grab it firm enough that you don't drop your handpiece, and just turn it until the weight of the handpiece is on that tension nut. And that usually turns it about a quarter of a turn. So like that. And that should give you around the right tension. So now we go and go over to the, the stand and we're ready to put it on and start shearing.